of some with JJ's remains. And it was that they found JJ's body wrapped in garbage bags, but differently. His head was wrapped in a white garbage bag, and the rest of his body was wrapped all up, head included, in dark garbage bags. So it got us thinking, is it possible that the way that JJ died was due to that white trash bag, that white garbage bag? Was it possible he suffocated? And if so, your natural instinct is to claw it off. How could that maybe be abated? Could it have involved drugging? So I talked to Joseph Scott Morgan about that, and here's our conversation. Uh, The first thing that jumps to mind, Ash, is the fact that J.J.'s body was wrapped in plastic, and that in and of itself is going to be a source for a wealth of information and evidence. You know, we've got things like latent fingerprints, hair, uh, dead skin cells, uh, which, you know, arises uh, touch DNA, and people are thinking, well, the body was buried. You're going to have dirt on the outside. You're not going to have dirt on the inside, potentially. So they have to be very, very careful when they're even removing the packaging that the body is in, because any disruption in that can disturb this very, very fragile evidence. And then beyond that, you know, you're going to be thinking uh, from uh, a kind of a chemical level relative to J.J., uh, he did have the bag over his head. And, and you know, my thought is, is this a, a means in order to, say, for instance, suffocate J.J.? I don't know, maybe so, but how do you get him to that point where you can place a bag over his head and kind of hold him in stasis, if you will, long enough to do that? That's where toxicology comes in. Well, that was immediately what came to mind when I read the affidavit and saw there was a white plastic substance covering uh, the child's head, but black plastic for the rest of the body. And anybody knows that uh, you'll claw away at it if you can, and there'll be some sort of signs of struggle. Yeah. How would you try to avoid the sounds, the, the signs of struggle? Would it be uh, perhaps introducing a drug into the uh, into the crime? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was I was kind of opining about this my own way the other day because uh, during my career as a medical legal death investigator, I worked a a number of cases that all stem from an organization or a, uh, called the Hemlock Society that a famous book was published called Final Exit. And this is kind of a society that believes in assisted suicide and what they refer to as uh, self-deliverance. But one of the methodologies that they talk about with this is simply ingesting uh, copious amounts of a substance like diphenhydramine, which you can find in sleep aids and NyQuil and those sorts of things, and then place a bag over your head uh, so that you deprive yourself of oxygen. This is a respiratory depressant. I think that that's probably what we would be looking at, something that would slow heart rate, something that would compromise your ability to breathe. You place the bag over the head. That compromises uh, replenishment of oxygen, and you have an anoxic death, which literally means that the brain is going to shut down because it's not being oxygenated. It's important to remember with this that, you know, the brain only makes up about, mm, I don't know, 2% of our total body weight, uh, but it it requires uh, roughly 15 to 20% of all the oxygen that's utilized in our bodies. So the first thing that the layperson would think was, well, that would show up in an autopsy if there was some kind of drug introduced, especially into JJ, who was buried as a as a full body, he wasn't dismembered, he wasn't burned like the other child was, uh, Tylee, that would show up or would it? Well, that's that's the trick, isn't it? Uh, because uh, let me tell you what we're dealing with. If you give somebody a substance to ingest, uh, uh, say a, a drink is laced with something, you inject them with something, uh, you give a small child uh, something to say, well, this is to make you feel better. Remember, uh, uh, J.J. was used to taking medication. Of course, he hadn't been taking it like he should have, but he, this child was used to being given medication. So Lord only knows what he may have been given. But that aside, did you live long enough for the drugs to actually metabolize and to begin to break down? Or is there a half-life that's still going to exist in the drug? It, that is, does it exist in some form? Now, uh, aside from that, we have to think about, you know, these bodies were buried for a protracted period of time. And as we all know, what's going on here is decomposition. So how much is decomposition going to impact any substance that was left in the body? That remains to be seen. Uh, most of the time, think about uh, people think, well, if you're talking about poisoning, 
uh, we're going to think about heavy metals and you can find that in a hair. Yeah, but do you realize how rare it is somebody actually gets poisoned with heavy metals? We hear about it, you know, in the news and that sort of thing and, you know, all kinds of dramatic tales. It's not that frequently. We're talking about arsenic and things like that. It just doesn't happen as frequently as you might think 